Albion Online just released their new dev talk and they're going to talk about some guild activities, future updates, and maybe they're pausing some major developments to listen to your feedback. So let's react to the latest dev talk from Albion Online. Let's do it. Albion Online. It's a sandbox MMO. Hello RPG. and welcome again to another Albion Online Hello, dev talk. Hello, Robin. The dust has barely settled from the Crystal Raiders update we launched at the beginning of 2024. And okay. now, less than two months later, it's already time to introduce the next update. Albion's new update schedule is quite a change of pace, but we are yes, very excited to keep pushing forward and we can't wait to share what's coming next. Before we get to that, however, I want to talk about the previous update for a moment. Okay. In Crystal Raiders, we introduced all right, let's let's take a look at that. Obviously, the the Raiders update, the first one was, I would say it's not it's less in, than ideal. I would say it's less than ideal because we didn't really get the item that were promised. Uh, we are going to get it in a in like a month or so after the end of the season. But this design on the arcane staff, the crystal arcane, actually looks really cool. It's like kudos to the design team of. Uh, SBI, because that looks really, Crystal really Raiders, awesome. Crystal we introduced new guild season rewards, territory raiding, new territory control and hideout attack costs, a mm -hmm. daily might bonus, and more. We've been monitoring the impact of these changes and have observed increased Outlands activity and a higher diversity of guilds active in the Outlands, which makes us very happy. That's good. At the same time, seeing raiding in action confirmed what we suspected all along. Defending from raids is difficult, in particular for smaller guilds. And this is exactly where Albion's next update comes in. Okay. Albion's Still next guild. major update, launching before the start of the next season, will be called Foundations. And it will contain a major overhaul of territories, adding the option of upgrading your territory defenses into mighty fortifications and gaining additional benefits from territory control. Ooh. Okay, so this is really good because it now actually has, Albion now has this true siege kind of feel. Uh, in the territory defense in Albion Online, it's always been almost similar for the past four years that I've been playing the game. So this is actually a welcome change because it will be more varied from territory to territory depending on how the guild actually maintains their um their island uh, their territories and all that so this is absolutely a, a huge plus for the game guilds will be able to build and improve fortified walls and gates in Look territories which will then hold attackers at bay during raid or territory conquest battles okay. different tiers of wall mean a harder time to break through them and more time for the defenders to rally their forces and rain down death on the attackers from the safety of their walled territory. Okay. Territory guards will also be reworked and guilds will be able to upgrade these to unlock new guard abilities and aid in the territory defense. And so I'm actually very interested in how the skills are going to be unlocked for the new um, guards of the territories. Will it be like something that you can choose from? Is it going to be dependent on the the specific location of where the territory is, similar to how the faction warfare bosses actually have different, different guardians or different, yeah, different guardians with different skills. Is it going to be similar to that? It's uh, definitely going to be interesting. I, I really hope they can just actually just pick and choose what skills or what bosses or what types of guards you can. Uh, put in your territory. That would be nice, actually, They're, so that they can actually create some sort of like meta guards. There are many reasons why we think fortifications will be a great addition for the game. The upgrade process, which largely costs stone, will help the ailing stone economy. Okay, so this is one of those things that they actually promised last year, I believe, beginning of last year, where they said they were going to find a way to finally make the stone blocks or the stone economy in the game be more in tune with the rest of the resources. Because right now, if you look at it, tier three stones are actually more valuable than tier four because tier three is used for a lot of like these plots and things like that. So this is definitely going to be interesting to see how, um, how this actually affects 
the economy of Albion Online. And I think a lot of stone gatherers will rejoice because of this because there's going to be more um, instances or more items, in this case, territories where they can use stone blocks, actually. And the guards and walls will be a significant aid when trying to hold off raiders and territory attackers. Okay. Most importantly, though, fortifications mean that no two territory fights should play out the same. That is your good. strategies and tactics will depend on the choices the defender made during the upgrade process. That's actually really good because you as a defender now have a choice what to defend where to sort of like lead them the attackers maybe try to bait one of the one of the parts of your territory to be weaker so that they can funnel into a specific choke point to uh, be used as um, your advantage which is pretty good to them to choose which upgrades to prioritize as you can't simply upgrade the entire fortification at once Sure. And defenses will reset when a territory gets conquered and at the end of the season. So that reset, the territory will reset. So all of the fortification that you have done will actually just be negated and will be back to like a tier four, the lowest tier of the defense. I'm assuming that's the, that's the meaning of that explanation there from Robin. And that is actually very smart because... You know, you don't have a specific, or you don't, you won't have a territory that's fully built up to say tier eight, and then no one will use the stones anymore because it's already tier eight. If it resets back to tier four, the new players or the new guild that are actually going to control the territory will then need to buy more stones, bring more demand for the stone economy, and this is again huge plus for for stone gatherers. This should lead to more varied territory raiding and battle experience. And mm -hmm. we're very excited to expand upon that system with more choices for attackers and defenders in the future. Okay. All in all, the Foundations update will lay the, well, foundations for adding... When I, when I heard that for the first time, I was like, huh, that's really good. But I think... SBI needs new new writers for this one. <laughs> that was a little just low hanging fruit, but <laughs> it is what it is. True siege battles to Albion online. To add additional justification to spending resources on upgrading your defenses, the value of territories will improve to include a daily reward chest. Ooh, daily the reward chest. The contents of this chest are generated based on the player activity in the local and neighboring clusters. Ooh. So, could you so okay, I forgot about this actually. So this is going to be interesting. All right, let's let's let uh, Robin actually explain this, and we'll react. Calling a territory with plenty of high-value player activity is key to maximizing this reward. Okay. This new system encourages guilds to actively play within proximity of their own territories, but it also creates an incentive for territory owners to stop attacking every player doing PvE near their territories. It might possibly even bring them to protect such players from would-be attackers. Okay, that is a system that was completely unexpected for me. It's always been that a certain map with a certain guild only has or with certain resources is almost exclusively farmed by the guild territory owners usually and anyone who comes across those maps are usually just killed right away now this new daily chest is very interesting because Every player now that does activities around your territory and neighboring territories will now basically upgrade the chest that you get per day. So what Robin says, there might be an incentive to not just kill players willy-nilly because they are there in your territory. They're just PVing, they're just gathering, they're just killing mobs. So this player activities actually is very interesting. Will it be just purely PvE? Let's say if there are more dungeons cleared in your territory, in your map, your chests are going to be better. That means instead of just doing any activities anywhere else, 
in order to help your guild, you may want to do corrupted dungeons near your territory. You may want to do hell gates in your territory. You may want to do just gathering in your territory and around your territory instead of going to the mist. Just to be able to help your guild get better results in that daily chest, which is very, very, very interesting. Guilds will now do CDA gathering sessions <laughs> and be like, okay, guys, we need to be able to increase our loot for the day. Let's just kill all the mobs in the area, do all the dungeons, gather all nodes, do everything. That is going to bring more people back into the black zone and just do PvE activities in the black zone uh, because of this uh, specific change. That is really good. The Foundations update, of course, also brings the next batch of crystal weapons, as well as the long-awaited spectator mode for custom matches. Ooh, this is something that I am very excited about. As a community, we are now going to get a spectator mode for arenas, custom arenas. I think there are already some ideas that I can bring back from other games that I played, uh, specifically 3v3. Um, Custom 2v2 arenas would be nice. So you will able to like broadcast the fights without actually being there. We can actually maybe do like a 5v5, right? 5v5, 10v10 kind of community challenge where in we just use the most random weapons. I do actually have an idea for a mini game within the game that I'm really excited about to try. But spectator mode is absolutely going to be super good, especially those who have active communities that actually um, play with uh, with the streamers, which is pretty good. Which allows anyone to run and spectate their own custom match battles in Albion Online. This is nice. Players could use this to build their own community-run tournaments. Yeah. There's plenty more to talk about the update and the fortification system, but both will be covered in their own dedicated dev talk as we get closer to the release of the Foundations update in April 2024. April. Before I go, though, let me tell you a little about our other update plans. Here we go. Beyond spring, we want to return our focus to other features than Guild Warfare. Of course, we'll keep on improving the raiding and fortification features down the line, and new crystal weapons will continue to flow in. But we want to dedicate at least one update to general game improvements for existing features before oh, we get into another my large feature. God. So, okay. So this has been in the discussion, at least in our chat, for the past year and a half, at least. We've always talked about how Albion Online's motto for updates is new is always better. And in that kind of mentality, they often really forget about the updates, the new features that they release prior to work on the new thing. Again, new is always better. So what they often do is they release roads, was great for three months, died. They released, say, Corrupted Dungeons, great for a couple of months, died. They released The Mist, good for a couple of months, died. And this died situation, the, the definition of died here really is just a, a lower number of players and there are just glaring issues, issues that needs to be fixed. But since the mentality has always been new is always better, they sort of forget all of the other content they introduced in the past year or so. And they focus solely on the new things, new updates um, that they are working on to boost the population of Albion Online sort of just uh, for the veteran players be like mm, just you know you're going to stay anyways let's just bring in new players bring in new players and just those new players enjoy the new content and will be forgotten while they're focusing on the new per update so this is always good we have, we've always talked about again a year and a half we've been talked about just pause you know don't give us any new things just pause everything, improve what you have already in introduced. There's so many things that you can do in Albion Online. Um, the one thing that I would really want to see as a Corrupted Dungeon player main and a Hellgate player main is we already have a system where there is a specific portal in a city 
you zone into that portal and you get transported into an, an instance. What I'm talking about is the Brazilian portal through the mist. Now we can introduce same concept, exactly the same. Bring that to Carleon, have a red portal. You don't even have to re redesign, just give us the same portal, make it red, that's it. And give us options to go to corrupted dungeons. Give us options to go to 2v2 Hellgates, 5v5 Hellgates, 10v10 Hellgates. That is going to make it easier for players to just get into the action without looking for um, corrupted dungeon maps, popping uh, popping 2v2 Hellgate maps, going to the Hellgate maps, journeying back with the introduction of Journey Back, actually, going from the city to the map, back to the city is no longer really difficult or dangerous to do. Just give us a map or a portal within Carillion, Corrupted Dungeons, Hellgates, and be done with it. If not, Corrupted Dungeon maps, like popping Corrupted Dungeon maps, similar to how you would use a Hellgate map, would be nice, would honestly be nice because all other content in the game that is instant has an easy way to get into. Every single thing, solo dungeon map, group dungeon map, large group dungeon map, HCE, the mist portal, 2v2 Hellgates, 5v5 Hellgates, they all have maps. Corrupted dungeons do not. So hopefully, hopefully Mr. Robin here breaks that a priority. And uh, hopefully we get uh, either a portal map or a portal in the city or a corrupted dungeon map. If you have suggestions for what you want to see us tackle in that update, please comment below and upvote any suggestions you like. We'd really love to work on the things you want to see most. Really now? After that, press X for doubt, press X for doubt. We're going to turn our attention to the next big thing for Albion Online. Okay. But that's a story for another. Oh, shoot, that's right, I forgot. Stay tuned. That was a cliffhanger. I actually forgot that was a cliffhanger. So he said something about commenting down below what you think should be worked on. So let's actually look into that. Uh, let's really look into that. Uh, defending raids is difficult, in particular for smaller guilds. Adds benefits that <laughs> benefits bigger guilds. <laughs> Uh, that is actually funny. That was actually funny. All right, so please improve the roads. Or right, do you see? Let me just... Okay, please improve the roads of Avalon with an update to them throughout the year. They really need improvements to shine again for small-scale players. The last rework didn't do enough or much to help the player base that was initially there, and especially the Brazilian portal and the Mist Tech. There would be a lot of room improvement and roads. Wait, why is that? How... Okay. Is that just it's just that that? How can I look at the, the entire thing? It's just that. Okay. So is this roads? Roads again. Roads again. Uh I'd really love to see a more fleshed out group dungeon experience, be it more enemy types, bosses, new tile sets and variants, or other ways to spice it up. Group dungeons for PvE? Kind of, yeah, maybe, sure. Uh, roads update. 3v3 Hellgates. 3v3 Hellgates is something something very interesting to me because it definitely will change the meta. But I don't think that is... Like, that's a new feature. It's really more about... They're asking what is the quality of life update. Solo dungeons with a shrine inside. If you pop it, it doesn't despawn after 90 seconds till you are inside. You have a higher chance of better loot, fame, bonus. Oh, this is actually a very good... Oh, this is a very good suggestion. I like that. Because it's a solo dungeon with a shrine inside. If you pop it, it doesn't despawn after 90 seconds till you are inside. You have a higher chance of better loot, fame, bonus. I'm assuming this is like a corrupted dungeon shrine thing where our solo dungeons have been nerfed significantly ever since you actually get to be super safe inside because it despawns after 90 seconds. So this is like a, don't let it despawn, give me better loot, but I still have a chance of being invaded. I think I kind of like this, kind of like that. So it's like mostly roads are being upvoted. 
mostly roads. This one as well, please, Hellgate's 1v1 or rework Corrupted Dungeons. We want real fight. Yes, we want real fights. Because right now it's just running away and running away. We want real fights. 1v1 Hellgate's, I think, would be nice. It prevents just running away and all that. Maybe, uh, maybe that's good. All right, what do you think, though? What do you think? Uh, you would want to see in Albion Online's next update, what specifically do you want to see? Leave them in the comment section below or let's discuss live on Twitch.